In the name of God and prayers and peace be upon the messenger of God. We reach the news of Joseph, peace be upon him, receiving his family in Egypt and how he treated them kindly and generously. The reception was full of warm feelings after decades of separation and sadness. In the following verse, and he elevated his parents on the throne and they fell down before him bowing. He said, Father, this is the fulfillment of my vision of long ago. My Lord has made it come true. He was good to me when he released me from prison and brought you out of the wilderness after Satan sowed conflict between me and my brothers. My Lord is most kind towards whom he wills. He is the all-knowing, the all-wise. The political system in Egypt at that time gave the highest position to the king, and the next position was the minister who exercised executive authority. And Joseph, peace be upon him, held the position of minister. Minister. For greater hospitality and respect for his parents, Joseph seated them on the throne on which he sat to rule. As for the prostration mentioned in the sacred verse, it is a prostration of respect and appreciation, not a prostration of worship. Here came the fulfillment of the vision that Joseph told his father when he was a child, and it appeared that the sun represented his mother, the moon represented his father Jacob, and the eleven stars represented his brothers, and the vision became a reality. Joseph, peace be upon him, attributes benevolence and credit to God Almighty in bringing him out of prison and in bringing his family to him from the countryside of Levant after Satan created a dispute between him and his brothers. Joseph is humble here and equates himself with his brothers, even though he was not at enmity with them. Rather, he remembers himself first and then remembers them, saying, after Satan sowed conflict between me and my brothers. This is a humility and disregard of him for what they did and kindness to them. Once again, Joseph, peace be upon him, uses the word, my Lord, which means creator, sustainer, and master. As we mentioned above, Surah Joseph takes care of the most beautiful names of God and teaches people how to deal with them. Here, Joseph, peace be upon him, mentions the kind name of God, which indicates subtlety and deep knowledge of things. There are great kindnesses in Surah Yusuf, including God's kindness to Joseph, to his brothers, to Jacob, and to the people of Egypt in general. Joseph moved from the well to the caravan, to the palace, to the deception of women, to prison, and then he ended up ascending to power, and here he was receiving his family in a majestic scene. Some scholars even said that the king, the courtiers, the inhabitants of the palace, and the entire city mobilized to receive the family of Joseph, peace be upon him. Joseph thanks God for this great blessing as the king and the soldiers mobilized to receive his family coming from the Levant, and he contemplates how much of God's hidden kindness is in this, which is not revealed to people, but rather known to God who is kind, knowing of the condition of Joseph and his father, and wise in his decree and destiny. The ecstasy of meeting the family after a long separation, and the king and the people of Egypt welcoming them, did not distract Joseph, peace be upon him, from the afterlife. In his eyes, this world is still a temporary residence, and the afterlife is the place of eternity. God Almighty said, Whoever desires the fleeting life, we expedite for him what we decide to give him to whomever we will. Then we consign him to hell, where he will roast, condemned, and defeated. But whoever desires the hereafter and pursues it as it should be pursued while he is a believer, these, their efforts, will be appreciated. And God Almighty also said, 
Observe how we have favored some of them over others, yet the hereafter is greater in ranking and greater in preference. The following verse, My Lord, you have given me some authority, and you taught me some interpretation of events, the originator of the heavens and the earth. You are my protector in this life and the hereafter. Receive my soul in submission, and admit me into the company of the righteous. Therefore, no matter how rich a person is and how high he rises in positions, he must turn to God helplessly and ask him for a good ending. Here, Joseph addresses God, starting with mentioning some of God's blessings upon him, such as God teaching him to interpret events and giving him power and position. And he mentions a new name from God's most beautiful names, the originator of the heavens and the earth, meaning their creator in a wonderful creative way unlike any previous example. Then he concludes by praying to God to make him die a Muslim and to unite him with the series of righteous prophets and messengers before him, such as Abraham, Isaac, Noah, Had, and others. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 